Hey, what's up, family? Check this one out. I got a really good children's book. But it's not just a children's book. This is a great book for a lot of you parents out there to read it to your kids. It's going to be great for you as well. You may enlighten yourself with a couple of things. So let me just, it's going to be a short video. I'm going to read the entire book. Trust me when I tell you. It's only going to be about two minutes long. It's really short. But before I even start, as you can see, like it says, Our Skin, written by these three lovely women, women, lovely, educated women by the name of Megan, Madison, Jessica, Raleigh, hope I'm pronouncing it right, and Isabel Roax. Great book. Also like what they even put on the back here. As you can see, it says, children notice, <laughs> pardon me, children notice race and racism as toddlers. It's never too early to begin the conversation. This book is a great place to start. So this book is going to be explaining to kids about race and racism, but they do it in such a way that is very enlightening to a kid. It helps build them. <laughs> it's a very positive book. Very positive. It's nothing negative in here at all. Although someone on the Senate floor took it negative, and I'm going to get to that as well. So let's get on to the book. Like I said, this, this is going to be probably two to three minutes long, this book, me reading the whole book. It's, as you can see, look, the big words. It's a real quick read. So look, and I'll show you the pictures. Like, is it, remember when you was in elementary school, the teacher would read you something, and then she'd show you the pictures. You know, and if you was like me, you was like, we want to see the pictures. Let's see what you just read. So I'm going to do that. So as I said, the book is called Our Skin, a first, a first conversation about race. And as you can see, the all different ethnic groups of kids throughout the world. Remember, kids are born innocent. It isn't until some not so good people put bad thoughts in their head about race. So let's get on with the book. Before we start, let's read that part here. It's very important. I'll read it to you. Here you go. Young children notice a lot. Yes, they do. Including their skin color and even injustice and racism. It can be hard to find the right words to answer their questions or to start a conversation about race. But when we don't talk about it, children often come to their own conclusion, which can include bias and stereotypes because of the world we live in. Simple, simple conversations can help them make sense of their world and even recognize and speak up about injustice. This book is a good place to start or continue the conversation. It's okay to take a break, leave something out for now, or weave in stories of your own. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, as I said, the writers of this book, they gave you a, a nice little animated looking uh, caption of what they look like. You know, like Megan Pamela Ruth Madison, that's her picture. You know, and then they gave Jessica Riley. There's her picture. Mm. Cartoon anime. And Isabel Roax. I thought it was very pretty cool how he did that. But now let's get on with the book. A first conversation about race. This is the actual book. It's not going to be long. We all have skin, right? It comes in different colors. What color is your skin? Right? Let's move on. We see different skin colors at the playground, at the grocery store, and on TV. What skin color do you see? Our friends have different skin tones. So do the people in our families. Wouldn't you agree? What about in your family? We all know how that go. Even for some Spanish people, they may say, remember how Godfrey always made that joke? Nunca, nunca, no, 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 sible, no, sible, no, no black, no black, no black, right? Let me see a picture of Abuela. Watch. The further you go back, look at Abuela. Look at Abuelo. You see, oh, look at Grandma and Granddad. They dark as me. But y'all want to keep saying, no, sible, no, sible, no, no. Nunca, 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 no black, no black, no black. <laughs> it's silly. But let's continue. Because we all got different shades of colors in our family. They're very true. They're very right when they said this. 
I think these women did a lovely job with this book. Definitely teach your kids about race. And try not to hold nothing back, but explain it in a way that's understandable to a young child who is growing and developing with positive parents such as yourself to explain it in a way that is very understanding to them. Because we all do come in different colors, even in our families. All right, let's continue to the next page. <clears throat> our skin is beautiful and strong and important just the way it is. What do you love about your skin? You know what I love about my skin? That my skin have a beautiful skin tone and the sun does such a wonderful job of making it just so as such. I don't even have to use sunscreen. And I'm sure if I was in a climate where it was like, where brutally, uh, sun is just brutally beaten down, I may just have to. But all it will really do is make me darker. That's the greatness about my skin. It protects me. Like we are called the children of the sun. So anyway, let's move on. We get our color from something smart inside of our bodies called melanin. That's this that protects our skin from the sun. You have melanin too. We all do. Everybody has just the right amount for them. See, she just has a little bit more melanin than this person. But we all have melanin. Even the food you eat has melanin in it. It's just that we have a little bit or a lot bit more than someone else. But we all have melanin. Just makes you a little darker. The darker your skin, the more melanin. Isn't it a coincidence? I just said that. So let's start that again. The darker your skin, the more melanin you have. The lighter your skin, the less melanin you have. Melanin makes our skin many beautiful shades from dark to light. What do you call your unique skin color? See, now I thought this was very interesting in this part. What do you call your unique skin color? I've seen a video very intriguing video a while ago where it was a little kid some would say white kid right caucasian kid right um he was sitting watching tv and he looked like he was just in his own little world own little space and enjoying the moment of watching his cartoons or his program or whatever it is he was watching so all of a sudden you heard the mother ask him a few questions she didn't show herself but she was asking him questions and i love the honest Answers this young kid gave, which tells me how his mother is raising him, which is a very positive thing. You can tell. So she asked her son, she, you know, she said, um, so how, how is you and your friend Jack in, in school? And he was like, oh, Jack? Yeah, he's my best friend. So she said, now what color is your friend Jack? The mother knowing that the, the boy is black. She still asked him. She said, what color is your friend Jack? And he was like, what? Real calmly, he said, um, Jack, he's brown. And then the mother said, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, ma, he's brown. And then the mother said, but did, don't, I thought that he was black. And, he, and, he, and the little boy go, no, that's silly. This is black. He's brown, you know, like, like that. He said, Jack is black. I mean, Jack is brown. And then the mother asked him, she said, well, how about you? Aren't you white? And then he laughed again. He said, mom, you silly. She said, but yeah, but aren't you a white young kid? And he said, no. She said, well, what is you then? And he said, my color? I'm peach. <laughs> See, this was very innocent of a kid. See, they haven't been, as I said, some not so good people. Sometimes they put so much negative things in the kid's head. And I love how the kid said, I'm peach. The color of my skin is peach. So then the mother said, yeah, but don't they say that you're a white boy? He said, no, this is white. I'm not the color of that. This is white. I'm peach. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. But let's, like I said, what do you call your unique skin? So let's move on. We may use color words to describe people like black and white. Sometimes we say people are color to talk about all the group of people we aren't, who aren't white. Hmm. Let me read that one again. Sometimes we say people of color to, 
Sometimes we say people of color. To talk about the group of people who aren't white. Mm, that's interesting. Very interesting. Let's move on. Our world has so many different groups of people. So there are lots of words we use. What group do you belong to? Black, indigenous, Asian, white, Arab, Pacific Islander, African American, Latin, biracial, and so many more. I take this one for example, African American. Me particularly, I don't like using that because that's the term that uh, not so good people have termed, labeled black people. If you went to Africa, they don't call themselves black. They call themselves the land base where they're from, such as a person from Kenya would say, I'm Kenyan. A person from the Congo, they go, I'm Congo. But they don't say black. See, some people get caught up in their feelings when an uh, a African from the land of Africa comes to America, and especially if they become famous, and they don't refer to themselves as black. You can't get caught in your emotions because they say to themselves and to the public when they're being interviewed, I didn't know I was black until I came to this country. And then people that's being naive about what that person is saying, they think that they're trying to disassociate themselves with black people. You could clearly see you're black like me, but what they're saying is I'm Kenyan. We don't call ourselves black in Africa. We just say we are from the land we're from. There's nowhere on any map in the world that's called Afro-American land. It is nonsense. But there is a place on the map that's called Asia. There's a place on the map, Arabia. There's a Pacific Island. See, so this really don't make sense, Afro-American. You could say I'm Afro African diaspora. You could just say I'm African, which diaspora meaning I was taken from there, but this is my originality where I'm really, really from. Afro-American really don't make sense. You got to remember, like I said, they call black people black. Unfortunately, the Negro, black, Negro, color, then they changed to Afro-American. It's ridiculous how they keep changing that. But let's move on, folks. Skin color can't tell you much about what people are like, what they know, what food they think are yummy, what their favorite books are, or even where they were born. Just by looking at someone, we can't tell who they are on the inside, but sometimes people try to anyway. I'm sure you've been to that. People love to prejudge or preconceive on who you are based on your color. They love to make pass judgment, which is called prejudice. Remember, prejudice does not mean racial. Prejudice means you passing judgment on someone or something without getting your facts right. So like this said, you can't judge someone based on their color. It is silly. I can't tell you, oh, because you're Asian, you must like all Asian food. That's not true. I can't say to my wife, oh, because you're Spanish, you must like only Spanish food. No, that, that isn't true. Yeah, I, I may like it, but that doesn't mean you know everything about me just because based on my color. It's, it's actually an immature pre-consumption assumption that you're making. Now, let's go along with it. Now, this part here, this was the part that it was a guy on the Senate floor. He had a problem with this part I'm about to read now. So pay attention. A long time ago, way before you were born, a group of white people made up an ideal called race. Very true. They sorted people by skin color and said that white people were better, smarter, prettier, and that they deserve more than everybody else. That isn't true or fair at all, but it's a story that has been told for a long time. Now you see, they made a very great observation with saying this because it's very true. Some very not so good people a long time ago came up with this thing called race. And it's very true. The very rich people, they decided to say, we're going to come up with a race of people called white people because there was no, it didn't, there was no race of people called white people. And, and to correct me if I'm wrong, folks out there, I think it wasn't to 
was it 1785 or 1685? Somewhere around them lines, that's when they decided the very rich white people, we will use poor white people as pawns, like in a game of chess, to, to, to increase our numbers. We will get these poor, illiterate white people to do our dirty work for anybody that's not white like us to say they are against us. And we will put these people, the poor white people, up on the front line to use them as a pawn, so to speak, uh, just to easily, if they get diminished or whatever the case, they could care less about those people. If they're foolish enough to fall for the cheese, you know, like a mouse to a cheese, that's all they really did with these people. They used them to play a game to benefit, for them to benefit. And these people that got used, even to this day, don't even know that they're being used because we are all one race, which is the human race. Let's move on. All right. When people believe this untrue story about race, that's called racism. Silence, please. Racism also racism is also the things people do and the unfair rules they make up about race so that white people get more power and are treated better than everybody else. Racism happens in a lots of big and small ways. It's all around us, even if we don't always notice it. So, see how this, this young man, they both come in, white girl, black girl, but he tells the black girl, silence, whereas the white girl, he just lets her go right by. But meanwhile, you can see all these kids making all this noise. So right away, he gets on this one. Unfair, right? Unfortunately, we see this all too often in the world. And it's good that somebody every now and then stand up and do and say something about it to correct it. Because when you correct it, it makes the world a whole lot better place opposed to a very ugly place. Racism can be a rule. Like if someone says only friends with white skin can play. What? Racism can be an ideal. Like thinking princesses only have blonde hair. That's not fair. Racism can be a way we've done things for a long time, like how there aren't as many books written about people of color. Now, me and my wife talked about this many times before, ourselves as well, her being Spanish, me being black. Me growing up in school, I seen no books of black people. I seen no history of black people in the books that we read, George Washington and all this other stuff, right? So therefore, I lack to have an interest at what we was reading. Fortunately enough, I was always doing well in school, opposed to trying to be in a class clown at times, unfortunately, but being honest about it. It wasn't until my teacher always told me that you're failing in class because you keep being a class clown. So and that's when I took my work serious because then she said, I'm going to have to report to your parents. And then I took my work serious. And then I always wound up getting the best grade in the class. And I guess that used to make my teacher even more upset because now she's seen my true potential. And it used to really annoy her because she says, you are really smart, but you choose to be a class clown. That is ridiculous. But as a kid, I still didn't. I just wanted to make my friends laugh, being silly. But my point with saying that, it goes back to that. Like I says, when someone says, oh, you're better because you got blonde hair, you got blue eyes or whatever the case, you go, what? Like I said, racism can be a way we've done things for a long time, like how there aren't as many, see? books written by black people. So, like I said, back to that statement, it made me sometimes, just like I've seen other kids, unfortunately, may have not had the um, scholastic achievement that I had, they got discouraged because they didn't see the Spanish, my Spanish friend. He didn't see no books talking about Spanish people to uplift and empower him. So therefore, he lost interest. My other black friend here, he didn't see no ones in these books that spoke about black people, uplifted him, empowered him, telling him the great things that we have done and achieved. So therefore, he was he lost interest. And when that happened, the school teacher would normally say, he's not paying attention in class. He's falling behind. I think he has a learning uh, uh, deficiency. No, they never had a learning deficiency. See, the white kids in class, you shown them everything in those books that looked like them and uplift them, empowered them, so they paid attention. 
But the Spanish and the black kid, you showed them no pictures of them that empowered and lifted them. So therefore, after again and again and again and again, they eventually lost interest. And instead of seeing and understanding that, the teacher said they had uh, learning disabilities. Well, that's not true at all. Show, some, some, show a kid something that inspires them. People that look like them, you'll see a great interest and you'll see so much intelligence to follow. Racism can be on purpose, like calling a person of, of color a mean name because of their skin color. Hmm. Racism can be by mistake, like if the same friend always has to play the bad guy. Could you imagine that? You don't remember when you was kids, you go, let's play cops and robbers. And you, could you imagine you had a white friend, they go, I'm going to be the cop, you're going to be the bad guy. Why I always got to be the bad guy? See, sometimes... And the kid not doing it on purpose. So that's why I say sometimes it could be a mistake. He's just having fun, but not realizing you keep choosing me to be the bad guy. That's not fair. And it was innocent. Didn't mean any harm by it. But sometimes that's why we have to explain this to kids and make them understand, you know, that wasn't meant to hurt your feelings. Although it did hurt your feelings, how about we correct it? Racism hurts and is always unfair. Always. That's why it's important to talk about it and do our part to make things better. What a coincidence. I just said that before I read this. We talk about it to make things better because racism hurts and is always unfair. You wouldn't like it if someone treated you unfair. I remember the lady, I forgot her name, Joan, I forgot her name, but anyway, she, had a, she did an experiment many, many years ago. All her students was white. But what the experience, so how's she going to teach them about racism? And what she did, Pittman, I think it's Joan Pittman, what she did with all her white students, she said, today I want all the students with brown eyes to line up on this side of the room. All the students with blue eyes, I want them to line up on this side of the room. Now remember, all the kids are white. She told all the kids with brown eyes, you guys are the first to eat lunch. You guys are the first to go out and play in the playground today. All the kids with the blue eyes, you guys got to wait. That wasn't fair, was it? But see, when she did that, the blue-eyed kids, they felt very disappointed. And they knew they didn't like that. That was so unfair. Why, why are you treating us like this? But then the next day, she switched it. And she said, all the blue-eyed kids get to eat first, get to go out and play in the playground. But all the brown-eyed kids, y'all got to wait your turn. You got to go last. That's not fair. See, so... The experiment was to teach both of them. And afterwards, she spoke to these kids. Did you like that when you had to go last? Did you like that when we treated the blue-eyed kids better? Did you like it when we treated the brown-eyed kids better? See, neither one liked it when they was being um, treated unfairly, a.k.a. with racism, right? So I think that was a wonderful experience, that's experiment that to this day is still resonates in those kids which are grown-ups now and it still makes a valid point to teach anyone kids and adults that was a great experiment she did so let's move on all the time even right now people are working for racial justice by telling the truth and sharing feelings by treating people the way they want to be treated like it says speak out protests are progress black lives matter by bravely saying, that's not right. By marching in protest, by singing songs that bring us together, by changing unfair rules, by teaching, helping, learning, and listening. What can, what can do, oh, I'm sorry, we can do it. I always say that in my video. We can do it. You can do it. We can do it too. See? And that's pretty much the end of the book, but I'm going to read even these little ones for you. Skin color. Even babies notice skin color, and every person has a unique skin tone. Simply talking about it helps children learn that it's not a taboo topic and can open the doors to more in-depth conversations about race. You can talk about skin tone in the same way you notice all the parts of your body. Introduce different skin colors during playtime when you may already be talking about physical attributes like size, shape, and color. That's that. The next one is called race-related observation. Mm. 
Young children are curious about race and many make race related observations in close proximity, meaning close area, to the person they are wondering about. Very true. Um, though this can be a, a awkward for adults, it's important not to shut children down. Try making a calm observation like, I see, your, I see you noticing that blank. I see you noticing this. I see you noticing that. Whatever it may be. You know, that boy there that looks Spanish. That boy there looks Asian. That boy there that looks white. And then you explain to them, well, the reason... Um, He's wearing this or he's wearing or eating that. It's something you haven't eaten before. And then they explain why. Well, their, their culture does this and their culture does this, that. Follow with an affirmation like, I love how curious you are. Then redirect if you can't talk more in the moment. Right now, we need to worry about what we're doing now, but later we can talk about it. But I want to talk more about this when we get a chance after we finish what we are doing. You know what I'm saying? Next one, family diversity. Young children often think that the way their families look is the way all families look. Very true. Find regular opportunities to point out family diversity and different skin tones with families. Give examples using books, photos, or dolls during playtime. Like I said earlier in the book, we look through those photo albums and it's like, look at uncle, look at Theo. Look at auntie, look at Titi, look at grandma, look at abuela, look at grandpa, look at abuelo. You know what I'm saying? We, we look at all these pictures and go, wow, grandpa was tall, grandma was short. Wow, dad was short, mom was tall, dad was light, mom was dark. Wow, all these different shades of color. My brother's lighter than me, I'm darker than my brother. I'm bigger than my brother. My brother is smaller than me. Whatever the case, right? That's when you can implement those things when you're talking about stuff like that and you do it in such a positive way that makes them think. We want thinkers in this world, right? Thinkers. Positive thinkers. Let's go with the last one. Identity terms. When we aren't used to talking about race, it can be hard to know where to start or what language to use. Hmm. And words like black and white may even seem like bad words. They're not. Having accurate and appropriate language for social identity groups empower children. Introduce identity terms during play or while reading books to help young children learn the language they need to describe themselves and to be comfortable with human differences. Oh, we got more, folks. Y'all want more? Like I said, it's not a long one. But it's very informative. I want all you out there that got kids, show this whole video. It's a positive one. There's nothing negative I'm saying in here. This is called stereotypes and prejudice. Children as young as six months categorize people by skin color. And by three years, they may start to demonstrate racial bias. Bias just means like you're playing favorites, you know, or you acting like you don't notice this, but you notice it over here. All right? One reason for this is that young children tend to generalize, try to guide conversations to individuals rather than groups. For example, if a child says, daddies go to work, you can say, which daddy are you thinking about? These shift into thinking, help children learn the generalization of stereotypes and problematic. Let's go to the next one. Race. You may have learned that race is a social construct but what does that really mean? And how do you explain it? Race is an ideal that emerged in modern times and that has no basis in biology or science. It doesn't. Just because someone's black or white doesn't mean, oh, he's black, that means he's smarter than everybody. Oh, he's white, that means he's not as smart as everybody. That's not true. Oh, he's Spanish, he's more athletic than everybody. Or oh, he's black, he's more athletic. That's not true neither. It's what you put into a person, how much training, how much studying you have done. That's what makes you better. It don't make you better in a way that you want to look down on people. But the reason you can run faster than maybe most of your friends is because you train more than them. The reason you know uh, the homework assignment, you get such grades, good grades, is because you studied more. It ain't that you just think you're better than them. You studied more. So you worked harder. That's why you get better grades. 
they could do just the same. All right, let's finish. Uh, racial categories were invented to, at, to advantage white people and to justify slavery, colonism, and genocide. There are still many people who don't know or understand this history. Very true. Uh, a lot of times when the truth is put in a person's face, they don't want to deal with the truth. So they want to omit the truth. Omit is just a word, O-M-M-I-T. It just means to leave something out. When you omit things, that's just like telling a lie. Could you imagine talking to kids out there? Or adults, could you imagine your family member seen you? Here's a good one. Your family member seen you drop $20. They seen you drop it, right? And they didn't say nothing to you, but they picked it up. Now, later, you're like, hey, I think I lost $20. Did you see it? And they go, oh, I'm sad, I'm sad. Now, think about it. They just didn't tell you. That's, that's omission. They could have told you, yeah, hey, you dropped $20. By them not telling you is the same as them lying, saying that they didn't take it because they knew you dropped it, right? You understand? I'm just trying to give you a simple example. Let's go further. To talk about race and racism with young children, it's important to start or continue the work of understanding it yourself so, you're, so you are comfortable breaking it down. To learn more, visit our website for recommended books and articles. I know I said it was going to be short, but interesting book. Got two more, okay? This one called Racism. So you got the angry look on his face. You have permission to talk to your children not just about diversity and differences, but also about injustice. Your children are already seen being impacted by and perpetuated racism. As they grow up, I'm sorry, as the grown-ups in their lives, we should not avoid topics that are confusing, scary, or sad. We need to help them understand and navigate those topics and feelings. Learn how to explain racism in your own words. This will help you find the right words to explain it to your children and follow their lead when they have questions. Call out racism as it manifests in your, your own lives and we'll continue to discuss this openly with your children. This will help them to do the same as they grow. For more on, our, for more on ways to define and understand racism, visit the website. Now let's go to the last one, folks. We almost finished. Hope you, I hope I still got your attention. I hope you are empowered by what I'm reading. Matter of fact, the last one is called Empowerment and Activism. Young children learn more by watching what you do than from what you say about your beliefs. That's very true. I remember my aunt used to say, don't, 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 don't copy what I do. Don't, don't mind what I say. Watch what I do. And I, I say that myself. Uh, be careful. Or be wary. Be careful of what people say. It ain't what they say. Watch what people do. Look at all politicians. They always say, we're going to lower taxes and we're going to do this and do that. But then when they get in office, they don't stand by nothing that they say. They do just the opposite. See, so they talk this, but they do that. Just the opposite. All right. Racism baked into the culture of the United States. In order to un undo this system, we must actively participate in anti-racism effects. There are so many different ways to get involved brainstorm ideals together and start small in your community for more ideals and ways to empower activism in young children visit our website so like i said that's the end of the book now i could have read it real quick under two minutes because as you can see everything is you know i mean everything is real even though that may look like a lot look the darker your skin the more melanin you have the lighter your skin the less melanin you have Melanin makes our skin many beautiful shades from dark to light. It's a real quick book to read. But you know one thing I would say at the end of this book? After reading, the end of, after reading this entire book, you know how I felt at the end of reading it? I felt like I can read this again and again and again and again and again. Again and again and again and again and again. How about you? If you read this book, you know what I think? At the very end of this book, if you might or even the next week, or maybe a family member come over, then you're going to feel the same way, that you can read this book again and again and again and again and again. Again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Do you remember a while back, they were making, it came out on the news, 
Mm -hmm. And um, even on YouTube, it was so... Sp to me, I felt so special with these two little kids. It was a little black boy. Uh-huh. I know what you're talking and about. And a peach boy. A peach boy. Yeah. yeah white boy. Yes. Peach. Yes. Very good. But um, come to find out, they were right on the um, on the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and they ran to each other. They yes. were far from each that other, but they video. actually ran and mm -hmm. embraced themselves. That was a great... And they were little... That was movement. It was so movement to mm -hmm. me that it was like so special. Yeah. You had to smile. Yeah, because the little they was like best friends. Yes. Little white kid, like you said, Peach. And the brown boy, black. When they seen each other, you can see the real strong bond and the love. They look like they maybe was like four years old or whatever. Then they was like, it's my best friend. We look just alike. Because they had the same haircut. They was like, man, we're going to look like twins. Right. See how innocent they are? Un and they lovely kids until a not so good bad person puts bad thoughts in their head and tell one of the kids you're better than him because of your skin tone. Unfortunately. That's very bad. That's very ugly. That's not right. That's not how parents should be raising their kids. Because in the end, if something unfortunate and adverse happens and that other person around you're going to need, you're going to want their help. Mm -hmm. So being these ugly ways that you've been taught, you got to undo that. Sometimes we got to unlearn what we've been learned especially when it's been learned in a negative adverse way so grab this book if you haven't already it's a great book as it says children notice race well let's go with this one it's never too early to begin the conversation this book is a great place to start and once you get at the end of it you're going to do like i did you're going to read it again and again and again and again again and again and again and again Peace. Subscribe, share, like, and comment. Peace. Again and again and again and again and again and again and again.